everyone and welcome to Shelby the McCaw's YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Today's video is 10 things you need to know before you get yourself a blue and gold McCaw. So let's get straight into it. So the first one how destructive are macaws or any bird in that case anything they can get to and bite they literally will mm -hmm. from trying to bite a tv laptops uh clothing door frames door frames my windows. car seat macaws have a huge drive to destroy in the wild they would forage for food and foraging involves looking through things biting things opening things and so destroy, destroying things is very, very much a part of who they are. Um, if you value your property, your things, if you have a nice home, then a macaw really just is not for you. Number two is how messy they are. You need to know how messy macaws are. They fling food up the walls when they're eating. They drop food on the floor when they're eating. They poo everywhere. They poo every 15 minutes. They are so messy. They're the messiest pet you could possibly get uh, get for yourself, um, without a doubt. Not only that, when they groom and when they preen themselves, they let off this fine dust off of their feathers and this dust gets everywhere. We clean her cage and her, the surrounding of her cage every single day because it is a constant mess. Number three, their diet is very, very complicated. Some people really don't know. They think seeds are nuts are what birds should eat and that is completely wrong yes they need to eat some seeds and nuts but they are left for training purposes only it's like basically feeding your child a mcdonald's every day so their food should be called uh, what is called chop what is basically veg so we're talking like broccoli cauliflower cucumber um red chili uh, chilies so Shelby's favourite thing is a chilli, a bird's eye chilli, anything like that. Uh, radishes, you name it. Uh, name some things, babe. Any veg. <laughs> yeah. You want their food to be as colourful as they are. And not many people know that. Not many people realise that the main meal a day should be fresh, organic, chopped vegetables for them to eat through. Um, some birds prefer it to be steamed, so you're looking at steaming food. Some birds prefer it largely chopped so big chunky pieces some people some birds prefer it finely chopped into small pieces diet is so so complicated it is not just a bowl of nuts I always say suts and knees it's not always a bowl of nuts and seeds just dumped in their cage and left for the day and it's very important to have a good diet for your bird because that distinguish how good your bird is as well yeah, it affects behavior it affects feather quality it affects so many parts of their lives having a perfect diet and they also need a good variety of pellets in their diet as well. So pellets should be the other second meal of the day and it should be a really good high-end, high-quality organic pellet. The fourth thing that people need to know before they get themselves a macaw is how much space they need. In the wild, these things fly hundreds of kilometres every single day. We cannot achieve that in our home, so we need to be able to offer them as much space as physically possible whilst they're captive. We have an outdoor aviary for Shelby. She has her own uh, cage and space uh, where she sleeps and plays and we fly her, we free fly her. Sorry about the noise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to talk over the top of her. Free fly is a huge part of how she gets her space and her exercise and allows her to stretch her wings in the absolute best possible way. So um, for us, free flying was a no brainer really. If you don't intend on free flying your bird and you're going to clip your wings, the bird still needs tons and tons of space. And if you're stuck in a tiny little apartment, then I don't think a macaw is the right choice and for to, you. Sorry, coming back to clip wings, we are totally, utterly against clip wing birds. 99% so, of the time. Yeah, I, I'm totally against it. They shouldn't be clipped. No. If you don't want an animal that can fly, don't, don't get, get an animal bird. that can fly. <laughs> but obviously there is 0.01% of cases where actually clipping may be required. So we're halfway through guys. Number five, big one, time. These 
animals take so much time. It's social life time, anything like that, you might as well say goodbye to it because this is your life now. So if you have literally not got the time to even look after yourself, then you shouldn't have a bird. This also, I want to incorporate, this is like a two for one, their social needs are so complex. They are social animals. They need people. They need other animals if you can't have people around them. They are flock animals. They live in large groups of up to like 100 macaws in the world. Being solitary and on their own just isn't an option. That doesn't mean you always need to get another bird, but they need to be around at least people a lot of the time. In order to accommodate their complex social needs as well as um, ensure that they are healthy, well-rounded animals, they are going to take up so much of your time. Number six, guys, is training. These animals constantly need training. Every interaction is a training session. This comes down to time as well. You need the time to be able to train your bird four to five times a day. Each training session only needs to be three to five minutes, five minutes at the very max. You don't need to be going beyond five minutes. But you do need to be able to give enough training sessions in a day, equally spread out. That also gives them the nuts, the fats and the proteins they need in their diet. So training is essential just to uh, add the fats that they need in their diet. Like Dan said, you're constantly training. Everything is a training session. Training means telling your bird to either do something again because it's a positive behaviour or stop doing that thing because it's a negative behaviour. Um, and you need to be able to have the time and the knowledge and understanding to do that. You also need to understand them psychologically. So you may need to do some research into the minds, the behaviours, the whys of um, bird behaviour. Number... <laughs> Number... Number seven on the list of things you need to know before you get a call is <laughs> cost. <laughs> Is cost. <laughs> cost is never ending. These things cost a bloody fortune. And that is not just because of them. Buying her body was enough. But buying the things that comes yeah. with her, that is expensive. Ridiculous. <laughs> they destroy everything yeah we didn't think it was that big a thing until she ruined my macbook until she ruined my tv we didn't think it was actually that bad but it really is so cost. yeah you need to be thinking about the cost the cost of buying the bird the cost of buying a large cage the biggest cage you could possibly afford the cost of building an aviary the cost of buying their food fresh organic vegetables every single day the cost of buying their pellets every day for the rest of their lives the cost of everything. everything. These things are not cheap, they're not inexpensive, and the cost is going to be ongoing for the rest of their life. So the next one, number eight, is noise. This thing makes so much noise. As you can tell through this whole video, yes, she's the baby macaw, this honk doesn't always happen with grown macaws. They don't make this constant honk but they are still noisy. Talking, screaming, through their play, through being with you, they are constant. It, the thing never shuts up. <laughs> if you have grumpy neighbours, if you live in an apartment where there are people left, right, up, down the side of you, if you have a shared accommodation thing, then these birds may not be for you, uh, or any bird for that matter, because oh, birds... for your neighbours. <laughs> yeah, because birds generally are very noisy anyway. And you really need to take this into account because I can't even explain how loud their scream is. It can travel two miles in the wild. I've had Shelby in this house scream with all the windows and doors shut and I could hear her at my daughter's school which is at the very end of my road. So you're looking at 300 feet, yeah. maybe more. Probably more. Yeah, and you can hear her. Neighbours hear her. And I need to stress this, if you like watching TV and that, and this is happening constantly, you have to know how to block that out. Yeah, and expect to miss major lines in your favourite shows. Because and you won't talking be able to, to each all. other because you literally don't know what each other are saying. Because yeah. every time you talk, and this is another thing, 
the noisier you get, the noisier they get. Yeah, so if we try to shout over the top of her and start shouting at each other, she will, she will get even louder. So obviously she doesn't make a noise. You're just making us look like knobheads. Stop being so good. Number nine on the list of ten things you need to know before you get McCaw is family bonds and how the bird fits into the family. Macaws, especially parrots in general, bond very closely with members of the family and they can tend to gear towards bonding with one particular person. No one knows what it is about that person. Birds are very, very picky and choosy and they can look at a person and think, yeah, you're my person, I love you. Um, and they will go to that person and that is their favourite person and then they can attack other people in the family. That can be really difficult for maintaining family relationships and maintaining bird relationships. Thankfully, Shelby is very 50-50. She's bonded very closely with both of us. She's very tolerant of our four children as well and even our other, our, uh, our other animals. So at the moment, we've got it good. She will get older. She will get hormonal. She will decide that actually, Dan turns me on. <laughs> I'm going to hang out with him and I don't like anyone else because they are a threat to me and my mate. Um, so we need to keep an eye on that. We need to be aware of that and constantly monitoring her hormonal changes and behaviour. Um, maybe that's another two in one hormones, just hormones. And not just that, and this is also is a, a three in one then. This is all to do with training again. Yeah. Constant training. Positive so reinforcement. Me and Kylie would do the bad jobs, the good jobs. So basically, what I mean, if I haven't seen Shelby in a day or so because I'm working, Kylie's at home. When I come home, I'm the one who gives her the cuddles, the nice treats. Kylie then does the bad things that cleaning, like taking her to bed. The bad things that Shelby doesn't like, maybe. Like putting her to bed when she's not particularly tired or... But we, we have a strict sleep routine. She goes to bed at a certain time every day and that will never change. So, she, and sometimes she's not in the mood to go to bed, but we'll do it anyway because that's her routine. And so sometimes that is a, to her, not a great thing, but we will share those good and bad routine. Yeah. And Cooking's control. a major one. She wants to be where the cooking is. Yeah. And that's dangerous. So we will so take... one of us will have to take her away. And she doesn't want to be taken away from where everyone is and cooking and food. So yeah. Um, family bonds, you need to be really aware of that and how other people in your family react to, behave around and are when they are with your bird. Last but not least, number 10 in our list of things you need to know before you get macaw is their lifespan. I, do you know what? We get stopped every day, every day without fail. And every day people say, how long do they live for? It's a question we get every day, it never stops. I'm talking. Sorry, she's talking. <laughs> talking! This bird, if we keep her healthy and if we keep her life stress free and if we look after her properly, this bird will live until she is 80. So she's Eight going to outlive zero. us. She down. will outlive us. She is in our will already. She is already down to go to someone when we die. She will live until she's 80 years old. There is a macaw, I think they're in the States that is over 100 years old. These things go on forever. I, the number of people that said that, that are 12 and 13 and gone, oh, I want a macaw. What about when you go to university? What about when you start a family? What about when you move country because you're traveling the world? What is going to happen to that bird then? You need to be thinking long term. You need to be thinking what is gonna happen to my bird in the future if my life changes. That's why I've waited until we're in our early 30s to get Shelby because we know that now we are a family and nothing is going to change hopefully between us. So that is our future. We even might be moving yeah. to a different part of the country because it'll be better for her. And our children and stuff. And, yeah. that, and she will come with us and that is she will be part of our life. And then when we pass away, she will go to someone else. And we have already taken those things into account because we know that she she will still be young when we die. You can't just chuck them away. You can't just think, oh, in five years time, I want actually a different pet, so let's get rid of this one. They're so emotionally sensitive. If you do that, you could ruin its entire life. So think about the bird before you think about yourself, okay? Think. You've had your telling off, <laughs> now do as you're told. <laughs> that is everything from this video. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something from it. Thank you to Shelby for being such an angel. This is obviously not her permanent behaviour. No, We've made her look like an angel. Tired. She's being very good right now. But this is the sort of behaviour you're looking for to train into them. Still calm, perched and not really getting into any trouble. But if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. You'll find us on all the other socials, Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. 
and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys! Bye.